It is Wednesday, the 5th of April, 2023. How are you all doing? Um, I got up really late today. My son is on a two-week holiday break from school. My wife is off work today. Um, I got up really late. Um, 10 past 9 in the morning, which is seriously late for me. By the way, good morning or evening or afternoon or whatever time of day it is. It's Imran Web Squadron. Great to have you here. I got up really late. So everything I planned to do this morning, like I thought, okay, I'll use one hour to record three videos and then they're recorded and I can edit them whenever I want. Hey, how you doing, Gary? Of course, that's gone out the window. And... I like to record in the mornings, and then I can do my other stuff later on. I don't like to record in the afternoon. So everything I was going to do this morning is now pushed to the afternoon. The video recording and I'll do tomorrow, it upsets me and unsettles my brain in how I like to schedule things out. You know me by now, you know, you should know that, you know, if I get unsettled, I go off on a rant and I feel like, ooh, I start to get mardy and moody. Um, but some of the videos I wanted to do, one of them was going to be about uh, Flexbox containers again because loads of people are now getting into it, so I wanted to talk more about that. I wanted to do a video on SEO key tips and things as well. Um, and then a few other little videos here and there. Um, I, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. So my entire morning kind of just went blech, a little bit out the window. But how are you all doing? How are you doing, Gary? How are you doing, Pez, as well? Um, by the way, I'm going to be sticking up a picture of the office layout into our um, Web Squadron Facebook group because I'm still I'm still troubled by what to do as ideas for the room, the you know the the entire office layout. So I'm still trying to work out what can I do here. How are you all doing, Bo? It is midweek now, Wednesday. You are in April, okay? Last year financial year closed off. This is a new financial year. How are you doing in terms of... Are you changing anything? Like in terms of your offerings or your asking price? So our consultation prices for one-to-ones, I have increased the price for that. Mainly because we, we were getting quite a lot. But also it starts to hit and suck into your time. Um, and I have no shame in that. You know, I feel like, nope, yeah, you know, we, we, we're here to help you out. We would love to help you out. But, um, sorry, just, ooh, I just went and posted without even adding a comment. So I've gone and done something I shouldn't meant to do. Um, so, ooh, let me just edit this post. Ah, oh, damn it, I can't edit the post. Let me delete it now. No, I can't even delete it. Why can't I edit it? How stupid is that? Uh, edit post, yeah. Did my lighting just go down? Did my lighting just go down? I think it did. There you go, there's my light. It felt like my lighting all of a sudden went down. Hey, Steffi, how you doing? Hey, Dipanshu. So I'm just going to very quickly... Um, just share over here. Well, I'm not sharing it. I'm just writing a post into the Web Squadron group, and I'm going to put something like, um, I need some inspiration for my back wall. Uh, don't worry about the typos if anyone sees any here. All right, just quickly sort them out for my back wall. Um, put down what I should add. Um... Uh, keep it clean and no, I will not be painting the wall black again. Right, so uh, if you are part of the Web Squadron Facebook group, I've just posted this in, I'm just posting this into the Web Squadron group. Basically, if you got any ideas or anything you can give me for inspiration for these back walls, Please go and hammer it down. I really need some inspiration. I'm really struggling. Websites, designing, art, whatever. My mind goes, Dsh. you know, I'm very creative. My back wall, 
I have changed my office layout so many times. This is the 10th layout change. The 10th layout change in two and a half years. Two and a half years sounds like a lot, but you do this many change. No, hold on. Two and a half years? No, it's not two and a half years. It is... Hold on. No, it's not, it's not two and a half, it's not two and a half years. It's 22 months. So in 22 months, I've changed my office layout 10 times. I don't want to change it again, but I need to do something here with the back wall. So if anyone has any tips or strategies, not strategy, but what you think I could do, please do let me know. Pez is still trying to figure out what to put up on my walls at my new place. And there you go. And I'm now asking you, hey, James, how are you doing? Um, I hope you've enjoyed some of the videos we've put out this week about Loop Grid and obviously Elemental AI. Uh, tell me, tell me, Groot, right? Whenever it's our own, we always struggle. And the big problem I had is if I made it too dark, it felt too dark. Now I've gone for lighter, it feels better, right? It does feel better. Don't get me wrong, okay? It does feel like, um, that's a bit too bright now. I've made that too bright. It does feel better. However, um, what was I going to say? It's just too empty. It's just, just too empty. Logos of all the companies you're working with, nah, I don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. Why don't you put your logo in free? Now, mm, what I want to go for is something that's really inspirational, something that makes you go, wow. Because at the moment, I feel like if I just put our logo on, I don't think it's going to have the greatest effect. And let me show you something I have been looking at. Uh, let me just show you a wooden block. So I have been thinking about something like this, right? Now, what I'm thinking of is not going to be this colour. It's not going to be this colour. But have you ever seen anything like these on the wall? They're like geometric block stuff. And I feel like having something like that on the back wall. The geometric blocky designs, you know, these are, these can be quite funky, I think. Oh, that's a rubbish one, isn't it? You can hardly see it. Um, but I think this kind of stuff is quite, you know, like stuff like this. Look, if I show you this image, oh, it's gone back again now. Show me the image. Open the image in a new tab, right? Something like that. Do you know what I mean? And if I could get something big like that, yeah, try and show my finger, something big like that on the back wall here, what do you think about that? It's, it's different. It's, I find it soothing. Oh, Pez, now you've done it, Pez. Now you're getting me rattled. <laughs> you're triggering me. But what do you think? What do you think? Because I find, you know, stuff like that, it's quite hypnotic, don't you think? Kind of thing, like that, you know? And um, I would probably want to go for what. To be honest, though, Dipanshu, I would want to go for one that is not coloured too much. And the reason why I don't want to go for colour too much is because at any point, any time, I might just suddenly go, you know, change my colour scheme kind of thing. So I don't want to go with, like, um, you know, uh, any particular colour, right? Let me get that colour in. There you go. I don't want to go with any particular colour. Hold on, you got a shadow there, innit? Let me just uh, move that stick a little bit. Let me just move the stick a bit. Anyway, something like that, anyway. Um, so I do want to... Can you see how much this is troubling me? I keep moving things around. You like the light pink. So what, you liked this one, John? What, you like that colour? What, like that? I mean, do let me know, though, what colours you like, though. Uh, what colour would you like to see me using in the background a bit more? Um... 
So exactly depends you, and that's what my thinking is. I mean, to be honest, though, as long as it's got a very light grayish color, um, and I could even paint it. That's the great. Actually, I wouldn't want to paint it because it already comes shaded up anyway. But I think that's one thing I might consider thinking about. Um, someone asked a question in uh, one of the web squadron, uh, not the web squadron, one of the groups, and it was about sliders. Um, this is still the same size room. This this room, right, is actually four meters in width. It's four meters. I have, I only use up two meters though. So it, from here to here is two meters uh, in full length. It's exactly the same room. All I did was paint the wall. I took off the sound boards I had behind me, Gary, and I painted the wall. This is exactly the same room that I've been using lately, the same layout. This has not changed. That has not changed. All I did was paint and paint, put a board up here. Um, I might need to do something about this little cabinet here because I'm not liking that. It's not working for me at the moment. Um, so Woke Focus, Work Focus, sorry, says, do you know Outcrowd? Never met Outcrowd. Who's he? Is he a great person? Blue is always my favourite. So let's just go back to blue then. Let's go put it back to blue. But that's way too bright. So let's just uh, dim it down. Uh... A little bit like so I'm getting this wrong now hold on I've got to dim it down no that's not blue that's blue sorry you know when you cheat when you hit the controls so you know something like that blue I don't know hey Akram how you doing by the way though please don't forget to sign if you've not already signed up for our webinar uh, Loads of killer tips we're going to be giving you there. Please do go and sign up. It's completely free. Hey, Big Kahuna, how you doing? Hey, George, how are you? Hey, George, you're not late. George, look, remember, you work your ass off all the time, okay? And you're always providing lovely, um, you know, um, you know, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? Support to everyone. So you, you never have to apologize, Okay. Uh, please do always remember that. So I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try something. You see, on um, so someone asked a question in one of the groups about sliders, or was it carousels? I think it was carousels about moving the navigation arrows to be in a different position. And I'm not sure how easy that is to do because I've never had to really think about doing that. So I'm gonna try something out while we're live. Sorry, uh, work focus. So you want me to go onto their website. So what are they called again? Did you say they were called on crowd? No, out crowd. Okay, let's have a look then. So out crowd. Uh, is this the website you're referring to? Is this the website you mean? So what... Um, what work focus has said is there's a they have some uh, so they have an impressive parallax effect. Let's see what they've got. Where's the parallax? I'm not seeing a parallax effect. Is this the website you're referring to though? Outcrowd.io is this the website? Yeah, Outcrowd. This is it. Is it is it this website though? Because I'm not seeing any parallax effect at the moment. Where's the parallax effect then? The branding page. Right, okay. Uh, well, that's... A, you could... Uh, well, that's a... Um, um, you, uh, you, could, that, uh, you could use scroll sequence, right? This is... Um, you, you could use scroll sequence. This is obviously a sticky column. So when you get here, it sticks. And then you get the items kind of coming in. Yeah, it is quite funky. I'll give it that. That is very, very funky. But it's a sticky column in the middle. And then the other items come into place, right? Um, that would need a bit of work. That would need a little bit of thinking, though. But with a bit of trial and error, I think you could easily get that built up. Hey, Shabin. Hey, Mia. How are you doing? Um... Jamie, can I ask your opinion? Struggling now with one client about price. What are you struggling with? 
What are you struggling with? Tell us what you're struggling with. Tell us what you're struggling with. Hey, Ralph, how are you doing? I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't feel, thank you very much. We hit 20,000 subscribers. Thank you so much, everyone. We're doing really, really well. Thank you, Mia. Um, so what I would say, yeah, is that how much effort do you put into some funky animation like that? And how does it look on a mobile? And what is the real point of it often sometimes like that? So I say that, um, to be honest, work focus, I'm not going to go and look at every single page on their website, you know, but I would say, what is the real aim of wanting to achieve what they're doing? You know, is it going to help convert or anything like that? So don't just do something because, oh, wow, that looks really, really cool. Is it something that you or your client want to do? Quite basically, right? So just have just double check and have a think about is that something that you or your client uh, want to do? Because it's really easy to see a design somewhere. Um, you want a 20,000 dance on the live stream. No, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. Not yet anyway. Maybe later. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, I'm just going to have a quick look at something because someone posed a question on... Uh, whoop, just increase myself up there. Uh, so someone posed a question. It was about uh, carousels. Okay, so I'm just going to go and drop in a... I don't know, let's just go for a, a, a carousel like that. I'm just going to go and pop in some images. We'll go for that, 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 that like that. Uh, so someone just basically had some questions about it. Uh, we'll go for about uh, five. No, we'll go with four. Okay, we'll go with four. Uh, it slides at one at a time like that. And we're going to make this carousel be about, uh, let's go with 200 from the left, something like that, okay? Because what they want to do is they want to move the arrows to be outside. Um, and I'm just going to change this to be arrows only, and I'm going to make sure that the arrow navigation, uh, the color of that is, we'll go for a black color. And I'm just going to inspect and see, is there a way that we can do this? Uh, so save that. Let's go over to my favorite tool from when I'm writing CSS is the site origin CSS tool. Okay. It's really, really cool. I, I like looking into it. Right. So we're just going to go over to this page. By the way, this is a test website. Okay. This is just where I do a lot of my designing and stuff like that. Anyway, look, now we're in site origin CSS. Anyway, um, just looking at the questions, okay, so I'm going to quickly go through them. Jamie made a WooCommerce store, put 100 products with descriptions, made good SEO. Wow, you did a lot of work there. So I asked for 3000 but they, yeah, but hold on, Jamie. Did you not agree the price before you did the work? Did you not agree the price before you did the work? So have you done the work? Have you done the work? And now you're telling them the cost because that's the, that's the wrong way to do things. Can you clarify that? So have you done the work? No, hold on. Did you tell them the price? Then you did the work and now they don't want to pay. Or did you not tell them what the cost was and you did the work? So can you clarify that? Yeah, but to be honest, work though, because I would say... Uh, because Dipanshu, it's quick and easy. You got to remember that, like a lot of people that watch our videos and whatever, don't won't have that skill set or whatever, you know. Um, so I sometimes like to, um, I sometimes like to just uh, mess around with things. I'm trying to remember how I did this. I did this once for someone, and I can't remember what I did. I think I I remember setting it as a uh, was it inline? No, it wasn't inline. It wasn't block. I did something. I need to, in fact, I need to find one of my codes from one of my old videos. 
which I'm now just going to dig out from somewhere. Right, back to one of the, back to the comments coming in. So Jamie, clarify what's happening there. Uh, Bas Bas Basilios, you're struggling to add dynamic data from custom post types to forms in pop-ups. Okay, I have come across this before. So the pod custom field, I have found it is sometimes hit and miss with when you're trying to return it dynamically. I don't have a great solution for that. Jamie, there was one Presta shop store. Yeah, Jamie, I mean, I, I mean that doesn't really answer the question. So your your problem was you're charging 3,000 euros. Um, it sounds like you built it, but they don't want to pay. But is it that you were just putting out what the cost was and they don't want to pay it? And if they don't want to pay it and you're being honest with your costing, then you have to kind of just go, well, forget it then. You know, you, you just have to, um, you know, if they're not willing to pay, you, you you just move on. You don't you don't try to um, what's the word? You don't you know you can justify it as much as you want, but if they're not willing to pay, you just let it go, right? You just let it go um, because uh, sorry, it's got to find. I'm trying to find a video I did because I wrote some CSS code for something and I cannot find the CSS code. Where did I do it? I did some. I did some CSS code. It was moving the dots. Where did I? How did I move the dots? How did I move the dots? You know, because um, trying to. By the way, don't forget to hit like. You can defend yourself uh, all the way, but if the client was never ever gonna pay that kind of money because of the average price in your country, then you try and meet them halfway. Thank you, Raptor X. What you hey, Claudius. What you then say to them is, okay, your budget is one and a half thousand. You're not going to pay three thousand. Here's what I can do for one and a half thousand. And um, to be honest, Dupanchu, I give up so much free time. Yeah, that I'm just going to like. There's no giveaway. There's no planned giveaway at the moment. Maybe in the future there will be, but there's no planned giveaway at the moment. Um, but I would say that if they're not willing to pay, um, yeah, Gary, what you've got to do, Gary, though, is you've got to sign up, okay? You've got to sign up for it. And if you can't make it, I will share it out with you, okay? Um, uh, but it's a bit of a difficult one because if you think about sales funnels, yeah, if you think about funnels, and the way things work with why are we doing a free webinar and all of that. Um, when we're not going to replay it. Now, will the link be made available? That's a little bit possible. Very likely it will be made available, maybe as a replay. Um, but what we're not going to do is kind of post it full out on just YouTube because then it defeats the object of it. But make sure you sign up because then it probably will be given out to you. Where was I going? Where was I going with this? Yeah, back to Jamie. If the budget is 3,000 and they can only pay one and a half thousand, you then say, okay, you've got a hundred products. I will set your website up and I will do 10 products or five products. Here's the instructions for what you need to do and you can go away and do it yourself. So I will give you the best website. I'll sort out your SEO. I will give you written instructions, two or three pages. Click here, do this, do this, do this. This is how you boost the SEO per product with rank math or whatever. You'll install it, but then this is what they've got to do for their, their stuff, right? So if they don't want to pay 3,000, you don't give them 100 products. You do just three products or five products or something like that. And then you should be okay. I mean, I think 3,000, right, for a WooCommerce store and 100 products, I wouldn't do it for that. The 3,000 would get me to do it for you for five products. If you want me to do 100 products, you better be thinking about 10,000 because now, right, there's going to be room for error. There's loads of images. There's lots of descriptions. The client might come back and chop and change things. There is more human error and back and forth that could happen when you're doing a hundred products, the cost would shoot up. Hey, don't worry, Gary. Make sure you sign up, okay? Make sure you sign up. 
Uh, what do you use to document the website at the time of delivery? Uh, videos. You can do a video. You can use Word. You can use Canva. You can create a PDF. You can do a... Um, what I like to do, okay, is I say to my clients at the time of the proposal, the cost includes a one-hour video call handover, right? A one-hour video call that they can record or I can record and send to them. If they want written instructions, there's a separate charge for that because a written instruction might take you one hour, two hour, three hours, depending on how you're going to deliver it. So in our proposal, we tell them you will get... Uh, and for anyone that has signed up for the super course, you'll see it in our example proposal document. You get one hour video call handover. So you're talking to them. They hear you. You show them whatever. You now want a written document. There's a separate charge for that. So what I've kind of done is I don't have to worry about doing a written handover document which takes longer and time and resources unless they want it. Does that make sense? So you you almost control the way you deliver as well. Um, and that's not because you're being difficult, but because it's quick and easy. No one likes to spend time sat there writing out, right, now click here, now do this, right? Because um, they'll come back to you and go, I don't know what that is. You've said click here. Where do I click? You've said click on the first button. Which button? There's three buttons. Then you've got to make sure you got screenshots. Then what if like the elemental interface changes and stuff like that? Hey, Tara Kangas. Yeah? Uh, yes, John. I do allow a recorded version because I'm going through exactly what they need to do. And I do make clear this is accurate at this point in time. Okay? If they do not take on a maintenance plan, right? If they're on a maintenance plan and in the future the interface changes and we need to review it, we can do that as another quick video call, 10 minute, 15 minute. If, however, there is no maintenance plan and you do a handover and a month later they're struggling or they lost their recording or they don't know what to do, they then have to pay for a dedicated half an hour or a one hour slot and you make clear to them what the charges are. I'm not I'm not scamming. I'm not being a con artist. I'm just protecting my time um, and what we do for them. But if you offer, yeah, we'll give you a written handover, you could lose two or three hours doing that. Then you check the typo. Oh, I put the wrong screenshot in. Oh, damn. Now I've got to click here. Damn, I clicked on the website when I took the screenshot and I undid something. Oh! On the website, not the handover, on the website. You know, you've messed something up now. I better show them how to do that. I've got to undo it, right? Exactly, and what John says is absolutely true. And I know John does this, and I know George has done this, and lots of people do, is you give them a recorded version of it. Sometimes what I do is I record it, I then stick it on our YouTube channel as an unlisted video. I give them the link. So at any time, they just go to that link and the video is there. They don't have to worry about downloading the video. They don't have to worry about sticking it in a special place. The link for the instructions or what we did is in YouTube, right? So let's say I do a handover with Dipanshu. We do it. I, I take the video. I upload it to YouTube. There's no editing, right? I just straight up there, unlisted, right? So no one can see it. Okay, it's unlisted, okay? And I share the link with the client. One thing you should not do, though, and be very careful about this, be very careful about this. Never ever in your handover show the passwords, so when you're logging into WordPress, never show your password. If they're logging in, never share their password. Because if ever anyone saw that video, right, you don't want to be guilty of sharing passwords. So always make, be very careful. Never ever 
share the password. And if you did happen to share it, then once you've got the video, stick it in iMovie or whatever, edit out the bit where you had the password, take it out, cut it out, right? Loop, delete it, get rid of it, okay? Then upload that to YouTube and away you go. And it keeps it so quick and easy. Do you know how many times I've done that? Do you know how many times I've done that? Right? Um, and the clients, you know, I can literally see because on it's on our YouTube studio or channel, the studio bit, I can literally see, though, that ah, that video I gave them, they've never watched it. Not once. Fine. Up to them. Whereas someone else has watched it 20 times now. Now, is that because they keep forgetting or they need a reminder, for instance? Um, and here's another really good tip as well. When you upload the video, right, scan it right, for like maybe um, uh, maybe around the 22 minute mark is when we start talking about blogs. Maybe at the 49 minute mark, we start talking about products. Give them a few timestamps. Let them know, look, at this point is when we talked about blog. This is when we talked about product. This is when we talked about updates. Just give them a few timestamps. Keep it really, really like, you know, um, thank you, Andrew, I have a halo. Right, you know, you do that and uh, they're happy. Because don't forget, from a client point of view, right, m m nine times out of ten, when a client signs up for anything, you get a written PDF. You get a link to a document. You get like an FAQ and you're trying to find the answer to how do I add a product? How do I add it? Oh, I've got to read this. No, I've got to read that. No, I've got to go here. No, I've got to go there. Whenever I say to clients, by the way, you will also get a dedicated one hour video call with me where I will hand over and take you through it step by step. If you need more, then there's an additional cost, but we're going to get it done in an hour and it will be recorded and you will get that as well so that you can watch it in your own time as a reminder. Do you know how much they love me for that? You can literally, hey, JMXHD, how you doing? They love knowing that you are going to explain it to them rather than, um, yeah, go and read all that, right? They feel like you are helping them out, um, you know? And here's the other great thing. Do you remember I shared a code snippet? How many of you remember the code snippet? Uh, by the way, Big Kahuna, I'll finish this point and I'll come back to you. I shared a code snippet about three weeks ago on how you can show training videos in your WordPress dashboard. Do you remember that? The WordPress dashboard, code snippet. Once you've got a video, you stick it in, you stick it into a code snippet so that it is always on their WordPress dashboard. That video, the link to the video, when they go to WordPress, they, there'll be a link called training in their WordPress sidebar. They click that and it will now list all the PDFs, all the written guides, if that's what you want to do, all of the videos, and you can have different videos for them to access their training. How good is that? And you're not white labeling. Hey, Indipri, you're not white labeling, right? You know, that just keeps things really, really simple and easy for them. What do you think about that? Exactly. Right, Big Kahuna. Does anyone still use RSS feeds only for podcasts? Only for podcasts. Um, exactly, Jamie. Same instructions. Yep, yeah, best solution. Video. T Troy, how are you doing? Do you think the best elemental widgets? Uh... Uh, there are, I'll tell you now, there is no brilliant Elemental Widget bundle. There is no. There is none. I quite like QI add-ons, but practically all of them have nuggets, good bits, bad bits. My, my direct question to you, though, Troy, is are you using Elemental Pro and why do you, why do you want to go and get an, uh, uh, a bundle? Yeah? Because... 
what you go for should be determined by what are you trying to achieve or solve. So you got Elemental Pro, yeah? So can you now think of like, what is it that you want that Elemental Pro has not got right now? So is it for you or is it for a client? Because it's very easy to go and get a plugin for no good reason. You never use it. And when you do use it, you use one little bit. And that one little thing, then there's a incompatibility issue down the road. Or you're adding in loads of JavaScript into your website, which you can't fully take away. Pez is right. I I don't like doing e-commerce websites anymore. I have I uh, look if 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 someone asks us, whoa, if someone asks us to work on an e-commerce website, please don't forget to hit like. We will obviously work on it if the money is right. But I I I'm not a fan of doing uh, e-commerce websites anymore. I just they get a little bit not problematic, but they get a little bit boring. Does anyone else here find e-commerce websites gets a little bit boring after a while? Andrew, long story, potential client, two sites, uh, they then want them moved. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Andrew, I'll let any, I'll let other people jump in on that because we've already discussed things around that. Uh, so Big Kahuna is asking Gary, uh, oh, right, they use RSS for hacking, hacking news. What is, what is this you're sharing at the moment? Hacking news, what is this? Right, I've just got to quickly check for a video um, that I wrote somewhere. I'm trying to find... <laughs> I'm trying to find uh, some something I wrote. So I've got to make sure no sound comes jumping out. Whoop, there you go. Yeah, so hope, I've got a feeling the Elemental AI that we saw on Monday, and I released a video not long after that, I think... We are going to get it sooner than later. I really, really think we are going to get it sooner than later. And I am very, very excited about the point when we eventually get it. Um, just because I think it's going to be great to be able to help write content on the fly. It's not going to solve everything, but to be able to generate some uh, CSS coding as well to help you out, I think is super, super cool, right? Yeah, no, you are right, JMXGHD. You can be quite creative. The trouble is, though, a lot of clients don't often want to think creatively and you give them ideas, but they just want plain, boring, simple, and it just gets boring. Any courses or places you recommend to learn UX and a UI? Um, it depends on the type of UX and UI. It really does, and it depends on the style of the trainer and what you want to get out of it. And I would just say there's loads of blogs and videos out there. I would say just go and watch a load of YouTube videos. You're going to find loads of stuff. Hey, Udo, uh, Clunch, the funny thing is the better you become, the less time you need. So it seems you will... Uh... Well, I mean, to be honest though, Udo, um, you've actually answered your question uh, in a way in, in terms of what you're saying there, what you're describing. Um, I base on the totality of the project, but the totality of the project is determined by time as well. So if a project's going to take me two days, that determines my cost. Whereas if the project is going to take 10 days, that determines the cost. They could be both be blogging websites. So you wouldn't have a cost for a blog website. You would have a cost based on the complexity of the site. So in a way, the time does influence the final cost and stuff like that. <clears throat> Excellent, Marco. And we had that great tip come from George uh, yesterday about Shop Magic. And I'm planning a tutorial on that as well. Um, so, hey, all happy, happy, good news, right? Jamie, we're building a new, uh, we're building an e-commerce with a tech doc API integration, but not on WP. Okay. Sounds interesting. I hope it works for you. Uh, visual media, lightweight RSS aggregator plugin, fast and very easy. Oh, right. This is the RSS for the news hacker one. That sounds pretty good as well. 
that sounds pretty... Uh, what have I done here? I've done something weird, I think. What have I done? What have I done? Urgh. I've just got to refresh a page. I've done something to my page as I was typing. I hate it when that happens. You know when you're working on something in the background? You type and then you realise you might have typed something and you don't know what the heck you've typed. Uh, not good, right? Not good. Living with pixels, Paul. Yeah, they've done, yeah. Paul's done some stuff actually on UX. He's done a. He, I think he had a course on it, and Reno has as well. But there are loads of loads of blogs and YouTube videos out there. So yeah, go and have a look at some of that. Um, I'm just going to try something here um, while I. You know, you're probably wondering what is he doing, but I'm just going to try something out here. Um, you don't need to worry about what I'm doing though. Uh, I'm losing my marbles here, actually. I'm losing my marbles. Anyway, um, back to Andrew. Potential client just called. Her previous developer said that no one can edit one of her sites unless they have Bootstrap, and he set up the site that way to allow it to go. So, Andrew, have you inspected the website or scanned it? For instance, like, stick the URL into scanwp.net. Is it even a WordPress website? Because I know they're saying they built it with Bootstrap and all of that baloney, but if she's open to um, if she's open to having the website redesigned, I've had clients where the entire website was Wix. Don't care. We rebuild it in WordPress with a new look and makeover. Right? Uh, you could have a website in Shopify. We rebuilt it in WooCommerce. You just give it a makeover. So if she's not happy, is she willing for the website to be rebuilt? How complex is the website? If it's quite simple, maybe looking at two or three days work there. If it's more complex, well, you know, the cost to do a website that took two weeks is going to be higher. Is she willing to pay a higher premium for the, just because you're telling her now we're going to redo it in WordPress? So just double check what what is the website? What is the build or the, uh, the CMS that's been used? What What is underpinning that website? And quite frankly, yeah, I would say, uh, you know, I would say that um, don't care what the previous developer says. I work with someone where the previous developer used Visual Composer and they didn't even use Visual Composer properly. They had done proper hardcore coding. And I said to them, look, you want to work with me. You've come to me. You know, I use WordPress. And at that time, I just used Elementor. You want me. Right. Well, I'll work with you but we're going to have to redo the entire website on Elementor. Oh, but can't you use Visual Composer? I, uh, you know, I kind of had to remind him in a nice way, but you've approached me on the back of me doing WordPress and Elementor. I know Visual Composer is WordPress, but I don't use Visual Composer, you know? So I will work on a website. Hey, thank you, for, by the way, JMXHD. I would work, I'll work with anyone if you're willing to work with me, yeah, I'm willing to work with anyone if you're willing to work with me. You know, it's not like you can take a Ferrari um, into a, uh, I don't know, a Nissan garage and go fix my Ferrari. Is the Nissan garage going to fix your Ferrari? No, they'll probably say, yeah, we'll fix it if you come back with a Nissan. Hey, John, how are you doing? To be honest, JMXHD, you might want to do, you might want to go on to like SEMrush, type in blog and see what results are coming out. What are the, what are the popular blogs? And by the way, you need to think of the ideas because it sounds to me like you want an idea and then you're just going to go to chat GPT to help you write it. So you've got to think about what area are you passionate about researching, getting dirty with, sourcing guest posts, have some intelligence, have some experience. You've got to find something that you know you can get passionate about. Because when people start commenting, you can't ignore them. You've got to reply back. Hey, Olivier, how are you? Dipanchu, how long do you provide post-launch support? Okay, if you are not on a care plan and we build your website, you get a handover. After the handover, you have about two weeks worth of on and off support. 
if there's like a bug or something doesn't work right or something I said isn't actually showing off in that way. So you have about 14 days. Website launch support, roughly 14 days. Hey, Paul Ross, how are you doing? Back to Andrew. Um, she doesn't have to stay with Bootstrap. We can go with the WordPress route. Present Presently only one page, but she says money, not an issue. Right, there you go, Andrew. There you go, Andrew. Easy, easy, easy. One page website, move it over to WordPress, redesign it, go away and do it. Go and wait and do it. All right, and you'll be absolutely fine. El Jedi, what do you think is better for SEO? Disable WordPress RSS? Um, I don't know. I don't know enough to comment on that. I can't really think there's going to be major issues with that. But hey, I don't know too, a lot about that. Um, Galadino, what if you want to run and manage your WordPress e-commerce store? Do you need front-end skills? Uh, no, not really. If you're using WooCommerce or whatever you're using... Just make sure your product descriptions are good. Make sure you've got SEO in there, which is good. Make sure you're using tags. Make sure you've got good images. Don't have an image of someone like that. You know, get cut the person out, even though cut the hand off as well. Get it all out, right? Um, no, Paul, you just got fired. Where did you get fired from? Back to Galadino. Uh, so as long as you can manage your orders and your fulfillment and your shipping and everything. No, you don't need major front-end, back-end skills. We've built websites for people for WooCommerce. They know nothing about web design, WordPress whatsoever. You set up the website, you give them instructions, you make clear what they need to do. Here's how you add a product. Here's how you delete a product. Here's how you modify the price. Here's how you go to your orders. Here's how you check stuff. Here's how you do blah, blah, blah. And away they go, right? Away they go. So this company, Paul, what was this company? You can't say I got fired and not clarify. So you say, you're say you telling us you got fired, right? Um, you're telling us you got fired, right? Um, what were you doing at this company? What were you doing at this company? You're going to have to tell us a bit more. I know not everyone likes to do that, but um, unless we have a few more details, we're going to struggle here. We're going to struggle here, right? So give me some more details, my friend. Give me some more details. What did you do? You know, um, was it anything shocking? Was it anything mind-blowing? I don't know. Go on, tell me. Front-end developer. Oh, dear. Okay, right. Are you willing to tell us why you got fired? Are they cutting back? Is it a resource issue? Did they not like you or your work? Did you hit someone? Did you hit on someone? Did someone hit on you? Did you make a mess in the toilet? What What was the reason? Ah, there wasn't enough work. There we go. Now, anyone who gets fired or gets news like this, it's a, it's a kick in the guts. So what you've now got to do, Paul, is literally reevaluate your life, right? How, okay, um, stupid question from me. How reliant were you on that salary? And... Do you think you can find something else or do you think it's going to take a long time? Are you now like, you know, how much notice did they give you? They must, Please tell me they gave you notice. Don't just, don't, please don't say they just said you're fired because that's nasty. That's really nasty. Yeah. Andrew, but by the way, yeah, please hit like if you've not hit like. We're not doing too well on the likes at the moment. We seem to only hit about an average of about. 15% of likes, you know, in terms of how many people have watched or joined in since we went live. Andrew, both sites are to function as listing. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Um, well, to be honest, Andrew, you could use custom fields without using the My Listing directory. The My Listing directory is really good if you want a map feature. So... Have a think about what you're trying to achieve. Yeah, also made a mess in the toilet. And I'm sorry. I didn't, do you know what? I shouldn't have made a joke about that. 
Uh, George is working, but the bootstrap thing is done by big agency. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I would say, yeah. Um, look, if you can rebuild the website, you take the domain, you know, and you just do a fresh WordPress installation, go for it. Okay, just go for it. Paul actually wanted to leave. I'm staying for two more months. Okay, you're getting one month extra pay. Okay, this is good. Okay, this is good. Two more months. Sort out now what you're going to do, Paul, right? You've said a junior React developer job, right? Get on the hunt for that, my friend. Get onto LinkedIn. Let people know you are, you can, you can start in June. Let people know. Get out there, Paul, all right? I really hope, Paul, that you are joining on our how to get clients on there because you might need to do stuff to help boost your LinkedIn profile. OK. Um, very good point by John there. Zoom, let them let them hand over control. I don't normally do that, but I think it's a very good, fair point. So I will let uh, George have that one. <laughs> I will let George have that point. You know, he can have that one. Um, I'm just trying to do something here and it's not working. No, it is working. There we go. Right. So now let's, uh, let me now just do it on the Chevron right. Ignore me, right? Because you're probably wondering what the heck are you talking about, Imran? Um, but you don't need to worry about what I'm doing. Because it's going to make absolutely point, Jack, pointless um, point to a lot of you. Can I pick this up? Can I pick it up? No, I can't pick it up. Damn, I've picked up the wrong thing. Oh, I've picked up the wrong thing. If anyone is wondering what I'm doing, I'm not even going to tell you what I'm doing right. I'm just trying to work something out. And I think I'm doing it in a very long-winded way. Uh, but it might, it might, it might kind of work. It might work. Sorry. If anyone is wondering what I'm doing right yeah, seriously, don't worry about it. Okay. Do not worry about it. Right. I've got some code here. Duh, 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 duh. I'm going to, no, I'll leave that code. Right. Anyway, sorry. I, I digressed. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Um, Seems this new client is aware of issues for the devs clients as she knows. And yeah, I mean, look, Andrew, look, you know what, Andrew? OK. You do a kick ass damn good job for this client. This could open the door for other clients to come your way. Right. You deliver as best as you can. Um, what you need to do. Uh, for them. And you will get her probably telling other people, hey, you know what? Ditch. Ditch Barry and come over to Andrew. And by the way, Andrew does acting. <gasps> Guess what? Andrew was in Outlander. Yeah, he was in Outlander. Do you think he can get his tickets or a signed shirt? Come over and use Andrew. Yeah, Andrew. Andrew Downey. You know Andrew Downey. Yeah, him. 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 Do you get what I mean? You do a good job for them and it could open the door um, for lots of future clients. And that is what you have to do. If you build a free website for a charity, it's only good if you know they're connected to others. If you just do it, but they're not very connected, they kind of only care about their charity you know, they don't really have, you know, it might be good from a moral perspective, but in terms of potential future clients, it's probably not going to work out very well. And you may end up doing free support for them forever. So you might end up creating a rod for your back. But if you know that someone or something is part of a potential network where they speak to others and you help them out, not for free, by the way, hey, Artif, not for free. OK, you, you know, you build the website. It could literally open doors. Yeah, it can literally open so many doors. For others, thank you, by the way, Galadino, uh, really, really. I mean, um, just to give you an idea, it took us uh, 14 months. Sorry, I did that wrong. It took us 14 months to get our first 10,000 and six and a half months 
to get our next 10. So I'm hoping that by the time I get to my birthday on September, we are hitting 30,000. I would like to see us keep growing, but hey, it's all down to um, it's all down to what we do and how you um, how you react as well. And I have made a note to a lot of video requests that people have made because I put out a video on the weekend saying, what do you want? What would you like to see us doing? And some of those I've already timetabled in. Others I have to think a little bit about, mainly because some of the requests that came in were, they're going to take a bit of planning from me and I have to really balance off planning time, uh, re planning research, record edit versus work time and it becomes a bit of a balancing act. EPHS, when it comes to using Elementor and other page builders, what is a front-end developer and what is a back-end one? Well, okay, why does there have to be a difference between a front-end and a back-end? Because you could do both. A front-end developer could be the designer. So they design the UI, the UX, and uh, how it looks, right? It could be the design of how it looks and all of that, okay? Um, the back end might be the builder, but why, you could have both. And I often say that um, a front end and a back end developer, we are, now, we are now more blended, I think, than ever before. And AI allows like people who are scared of coding to get into coding because the AI helps you. At the same time, the front, you know, there's tools out there to help you start thinking about design and things like that. Uh, Michael, I made a few bootstrap sites and converted them all to WP over time to save time. Yep. Yeah, I mean, um, look, I, I have nothing against bootstrap or anything like that. I just feel like if ever you and your client split up, it's going to be easier for them to mess around with the website if ever they need to with WordPress. However, for a very big commercial organization that are paying lots of money and there's lots of intellectual property or whatever at stake, then I totally get the bootstrap. Right, I'm going to go and have a, a two-minute break because I really need a wee break. I really do need to take a wee break. So uh, um, enjoy the music. I'll be back. Okay. Uh, hey, I'm back. Sorry. Cut out the music. Cut out the mute. Yeah, there you go. You can see the monolith now. Um, I mean, it, 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 it's a, um, it is, it is actually taller. I mean, it's a pretty good light. Um, in fact, I'll turn these, I'll turn that light off. I'm not going to turn that one off, but it is quite a good light. Um, there we go. 
back somewhere there. It is taller. Um, there's another. There's a, it goes to that tall, but I removed one part of it because um, it kind of hides a bit better when it's behind me. Like I put it in the wrong position now. Like that. There we go. Um. Just check the comments. Artif, I've been watching a few podcasts and they are these are diehard WordPress fans. They're really against they are. Yeah, I know. Um Yeah, I mean I I I've said this many times, right, about web designers. We shouldn't hate on the tools we use. We really shouldn't. Okay? Um I have a thing about hosting companies. You know my views on Bluehost and GoDaddy. You know what my views are on that. Okay, I'm very vocal about that. But whether you're Wix, Squarespace, Lava, 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 Magenta, you know, whatever you are, okay? Webflow, you know, whatever. Whatever. If you are good at what you do and it works with you, okay? Um, it was just, it was some, it was a, it's by a band called Calm Shores, in Dupree. Uh, it's by a band called uh, Calm. Uh, I'll put it here for you. It's by a band called Calm. Oh, Shores, not Saws. Not Calm Saws, Shores. Anyway, um, it doesn't matter what you use as long as it does what you need to do, right? And I know a lot of people are very um, strong about using like the block editor, Gutenberg, very default, just give using what you get in um, WordPress 6.2, okay? Uh, they don't really even want to use any add-ons on that. They want to keep it super, super clean and super light. And that's because a lot of them are very um, hardcore coders. They, they really love the hardcore coding side of things. They don't want to use page builders. And they will go on and on about bloat, page speed, X, Y, Z. And they don't like it because, um, and by the way, I'm, I don't want to offend anyone here. And if I offend you, I'm really, really sorry. But please hit like, even if I offend you. Um, before we had page builders, only so many people that understood code inside out could build a really good website, right? The moment we started having tools come on the scenes. In fact, I will even go as far as saying to you that I remember in 2004, I got into arguments with people on some forums. And they, in those days, it wasn't like a Facebook forum. They were like, um, you know, like um, exchange forums. You know, the places we used to go to get Excel tips and SQL tips and stuff, whatever they were, experts exchange, stuff like that. I remember getting into arguments with people because I would be like, oh, you've built a website, but you went and got like a theme or a template from Theme Forest. You know, in the old days, I'm talking about 2004 now, you got a WordPress website, you stuck in a template or a theme and it gave you a certain layout. Oh, that's not the same. That's not the same. You're not a hardcore. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not a proper website builder. You just used a template. And of course, it was difficult then because then when you wanted to manipulate it, you had to then end up doing a bit of coding. But even then, right, even then, when WordPress first reared its heads, people were attacking it then before we have anything like what we have now. And I just feel like there's this like uh, there's just there's like a hatred, isn't there? There's this hatred. I remember in two in the year 2000, getting into a debate with people because I worked at Leicester City Council. Um, and again, I'm not being ageist here, but a lot of the people I worked with were in their 60s. They were re they were winding down to retire. They were they were in their 60s. And they always said, oh, you think you can drive a car? You don't know how to change an engine. What? What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? Oh, when I was young, we had to take the engine in and out. What the heck? Why would I want to take the engine out of my car? I just want to drive the damn thing. If I have a problem, I will go to the garage. That's why we have garages. You know? Um, so there's always going to be 
this feeling of a little bit of hatred sometimes. And it's not just because of what they used to do then, but also because the moment we have more solutions, people in that profession start to feel, uh, what's the word? They feel, um, they're afraid. Look what AI is doing for image creation. Look at what AI is doing for content writing. Content writers need to evolve. Editors need to evolve. Logo designers need to evolve. Anyone that does creative whatever, they, that's the word, threatened, vulnerable. I knew you'd know that, Andrew. You know, I bet right when you walk on the set, Outlander feels vulnerable and threatened because you walk on. It's Andrew. It's Andrew Downey, everyone. OK. Um, and. Everything is evolving, right? And that's just the way it is. I remember when High Definition came out. So in, uh, when the UK got proper High Definition in 2005, or ish 2006 right i remember on the news there were makeup artists saying we feel threatened we feel threatened because now we have to up our game if we don't up our game you will now see the foundation you will now see the imperfections you will now see how we've blended we have to up our game yeah we'll up your game then I'm really brutally honest here, right? You have to up your game, right? Um, I remember when uh, George Foreman's, you know, his his um, uh, grilling, whatever, crappy fat busting uh, machine, whatever, were coming out. People were now, people in shops got, oh, ever since George Foreman came out, no one's coming in to buy a burger. <laughs> well, up your game. Do something. Evolve with the times. So I think it's a really interesting comment you made there, Artie, and I'm glad you made that because um, there is this massive amount of hatred. And in fact, the hatred we have even goes into WordPress itself. So forget the block editor, hardcore people. Why does, why do, why do we, why do we have to get into an argument with Divi, right? Why do we have to say, I hate bricks? Why do we have to say we hate breakdowns? I do not hate breakdance. I just don't like the, the the top guy. I just don't like his PR. Okay? I don't... It's not that I don't like breakdance. Breakdance looks really, really good. But I'm not going to do anything to support him because I just don't like the PR. That's it. If you say you love breakdance, I do not hate you. But you know, as as well as me, that if you tell anyone out there you use Elementor... The amount of shit that gets thrown at you. Oh, elemental. Oh, oh. You know, they're like, they're like, they're like, they're like, oh. you know, sorry, I just lowered my chair then put it back up. Um, right. The amount of hatred for all of that. And you kind of go, what is your problem? What is your stinking belly button fluffy problem? Right. What is wrong with you? All right. It works. It does what I need to do. My clients are happy. I'm happy. I know how to handle page speed. I keep it lean and mean. Right? I have seen Bricks websites where the scores are 45%. Just because it's Bricks, if you don't think carefully, your score will drop. No question. You could have Breakdance, which does loads of innovative stuff or whatever. But that doesn't mean it is the best. Just like Divi, there was a lot of hatred towards Divi. Divi or reinventing. But even before Divi reinvented, it worked for a lot of people. So if anyone makes a career or a profession in doing something, let them do it. Because it's just like bakery. Cake makers. I love their cakes. I don't like your cakes. But other people do like their cakes. So let them build a business. Let them do it. Let them carry on. Now, unless someone brings out something which is horrendous, there's a difference. Now, I do say I don't like Visual Composer, but that just means I don't like it. But if you use Visual Composer or WP Bakery and it works for you, go for it. 
Don't let anyone else tell you how to make your career and do your life if it works. Now, if you're using something that you know is broken and you know it's got problems, like loads of problems, but you're still going to use it because it's quick and easy, that's different. That's like selling a car where you know the two halves of a car have been stitched together, but will pretend it's a good car. That's different. That's now scamming. That's con artist territory. Right, back to the questions, because I seem to have gone off on a mini rant there. Um, yeah, I mean, look, Deepanshu, right, you've said, right, look, they should have updated. And if they haven't updated, right, okay, they now need to pay you to go in and fix it or do whatever you can to it. Good point by Pez about what he's using and stuff like that. So I just say, look, we need to spread more love, okay? Be proud of using Elementor. Be proud of the tools you engage with. Be proud. Look, um, I've had people say to me, oh, you're using code snippets. Um, you're not, you're not, you know, uh, a hardcore coder would go and use a child theme. I don't want to use a child theme, plain and simple, because... It's easier on me if I don't use a child theme. Is that, uh, yeah, okay. If I hand over the website to the client and the client runs away, again, it's easier for them. And code snippets is free. It's safe. It works. <laughs> Plain and simple. How many amazing snippets have we put out there about page speed and doing fancy stuff? Do you really want to go and do it in the function file? And that's... And, and and so I do get quite passionate, a little bit defensive about when people criticise what we do. And I sort of look at them and go, you do what you want to do. I will do what I want to do. OK. I am not going to throw stones at you because you decide to work with WordPress block editor. Go for it. Um, uh, Let me just come on to... Um, Let me just check some of the comments. Sorry, I've missed all the comments. I'm scrolling now. And oh, Verdi, how are you doing? I did not know Verdi was here. Hey, um, yeah. Well, isn't that uh, isn't that funny? Luckily, I was saying good stuff about co snippets. Few, luckily, but there is this like, and it's getting worse in my opinion. Okay, it is getting a lot worse with this toxicity that we're seeing more and more and more and more. Um. And I think that's the way of the world now. People now are not afraid to call, to say something nasty to someone, not just online, but to your face, to um, in you in the street. There are people that just stand on a table and, you know, if you... I mean, look, I'm not going to get political here. I'm not going to get political here, right? But if you use the wrong pronoun accidentally, you're in for pain, okay? So... But I just think that what we need to do is make web design brilliant. Help people out, educate, train, innovate. Call out when something is not done well, but then give them a solution on how to do better. If you see someone doing like, um, I don't know, what was I going to say? If you see someone doing something that is really, really wrong in the approach, let them know how to do it. But if they decide, well, no, this works for me and I'm always going to do it this way, fine. Because it's like cutting bread. How do you butter bread? Do you butter from the top right corner to the bottom left? Do you just go like in a, a parallel line? Do you go top to bottom? How do you butter your bread? Do you cut the crust off? Do you make sure your bread is super thick? Do you make sure it's really thin? What do you go for? At the end of the day, it is bread. And we can argue about the carbohydrates, the protein, if there are any, if there's any nuts or oat in there. We can work it, worry. We can argue all day long about that. But how you butter your bread is up to you. Because the bread is going to be buttered at the end of the day. Plain and simple. Um, right, let me just see some of the comments coming in. Um... Exactly what Michael says there. Child themes, okay, there is nothing wrong with it, 
But let's just say I have a parent theme and I make a child theme and the parent theme now updates. I now got to make sure I cover that here. And you might go, no, I don't. I don't, I don't care. I don't care what they did. What if they fixed a vulnerability? Oh, shit. Now you got to sort that out here as well, right? Make sure you cover that off. Maybe there's a new feature. Oh, shit. i got to go and change that and make sure I cover off all the extra stuff I did. But this is where code snippets, you know, sorts you out. Sorts you out, everyone. Okay? Sorts you out. Um... But like I said, there is nothing wrong with a child theme either, right? You want to go there, go there. But I just think, um, I remember, you know, um, some client websites, they had a child theme. And I spent like, oh, God, nearly three hours trawling through it, trying to find changes and where things were not the same. What had they done? Oh, right. I can see they've done something, but there was no comment there was no comment. So I think I understood what they did. But the way it was written, it didn't follow the, the way I like to write syntax. You know, you have like a like a, a slant approach. You know the way you write like like that. You go like that, down, like that, down, back, you know, like that. There was none of that. So I just felt really uncomfortable with it. Absolutely uncomfortable with it. Uh, let me just check some of the comments. Oh, by the way, Matt, I just noticed you were there. How? I hope you're okay. Um, uh, the thing is, though, Matt, though, when you say yeah, the thing is, though, Matt, when you say you go to the live chat, what you got to remember, though, is that is how many users are there of Elemental? So here's the thing, Matt, right? How many people are right now using Elemental? Now imagine that there's how many people answering the questions and how much are how many are asking so my what i would say is you should go to the web squadron facebook group or you go to the global elemental facebook group and you ask your question there because i'm pretty sure you might get a quicker answer there i'm not defending elemental support team but if you factor in like um imagine imagine right so here's a great analogy matt how many people are working in your organization right now, right? How many are there right now, Matt, in your organization? Now imagine that all of them are doing the live chat support. Let's pretend there's five people. Now imagine there's a million people using Elemental. Now imagine that 1% of that 1 million, what's 1% 1 of 1 million? 10,000, right? 1%, 10,000 people are sending live chat requests. Five people, 10,000 requests. And I've just based it on 1 million. Now think the fact that, is it, how much is it again, Verdi? Was it 18 million? I can't remember. There's a lot of websites using it. So what I would say is um, the live chat is not always the best route. Even I admit that because I sometimes you get lucky and it is luck and sometimes you're just in for a long wait so I would say go to the web squadron Facebook group or the elemental global community yeah and and you are right Pez the the toxicity comes out um yeah abs absolutely Verdi absolutely absolutely what is it 18 million 8 million 18 I can't remember 14 million active installs there we go so even if 1% of that 14 million, have I done my maths right? 1% of 14 million, 0 0.01 times 14 million. I'm sure I've done my maths right here. Is 140,000. Is that right? Hold on. 14 million times 0 0.01. Yeah, 140,000. So even if, right, like 1% of all of those were hitting the live chat and there was five people, even if there was a hundred people manning the live chats, 
that's a shitload going on there, right? That is a shitload of stuff going on there. Um, hey, don't worry, Claudius, okay? Look, Claudius, there is no rush game, all right, to sign up. And by the way, yeah, please, I do hope that anyone who hasn't signed up for our free webinar next week, next Tuesday, on how to attract and get high-ticket clients on LinkedIn. This could change your life. It's not a magic bullet. You've got to do a bit of work. But everything I tell you in that one hour, you can do straight afterwards. You get on with it. Don't waste time. Get on with it. Okay? And we're going to cover that off. Okay. Gene Thompson, has anyone used WordPress auto terms? Uh, no, I have not used that. Um, I've just realized the time. Okay, yeah. Um, Gutenberg, even though we hear a lot about it all the time with new things coming out, I, it's not evolved enough visually for me to get sexy about it, to get sexy about it, to get excited about it. So let me give you let me give you an let me give you an example, right? Um let me give you an example, right? Take the Toyota Yaris. The Toyota Yaris cross has a lot of tech and gadgets inside, especially like the uh the hybrid uh with where you know if you're doing if you're sticking to 30 miles an hour, you can be generating free energy, right? The Toyota Yaris Cross has a lot of tech inside. Really good tech. But the Toyota Yaris Cross... Now, if you've got a Toyota Yaris Cross, I'm really sorry. But does it work for me outside? No, I don't like the look of it. And that's the problem with Gutenberg for me at the moment. You can do all of your spectres and quicklies and everything. You can do all of that all day long. I just don't find them... Um, Visually appealing in the way they look and the way... It just doesn't work for me. Yet. Next year, I might go, yeah, all right. You know, might work for you. And there's, I mean, um, of course, you shouldn't just go for a car based on the looks. But let me tell you now, when someone says it's not about looks, it's all about what's inside. No, it matters about the inside and the looks, Okay. Um, yeah, but I, I, you know, I, I mean, Gutenberg is getting better and there will come a point where I start to delve into it a lot more. I just think that it needs to step up a bit more and, you know, um, the stuff that Elemental's doing, you know, cannot wait for the post filter. But Verdi is here and Verdi does not have to answer this. I really hope the elemental people think long and hard and don't just do it for the taxonomy. Look at what bricks are doing with their filter system for the product and give us a filter system for the post and product which is as good so that we are not just using the category. Category filters are boring. Great for blog, boring for WooCommerce. But WooCommerce, you got to have the... The, you know, like the price range and all of that, the um, attribute filter, the, you know, be able to pick and choose. That's what we really, really need. That's what we really, really need. Okay, everyone, I'm going to give you the two minute warning, okay, because I want to go and crack on with other stuff. I'm a bit late on doing stuff today, so I am playing catch up. Um, so, yeah, I'm playing catch up at the moment. Um, Two minute warning. Any final questions, please ask. We do have Verdi on here. So if you want to fire anything off about Elemental, keep it clean. Keep it lean. Please don't be mean. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go crack on. Um, I'm just working on a solution um, uh, that I've been working on in the background, though, uh, to do with slides. And I think I've cracked it. I just need to test it out. And I might get a quick video out. I have got a video coming out tomorrow, which I think is going to pee off a lot of people. It's basically me having a rant. It's a two-minute video 
I'm having a bit of a rant and it's about I have had a lot of people say to me, you need to make clear in your videos that you're using Elementor Pro. And I sort of feel a bit like, what, you really think I'm doing an Elementor video using Elementor Free? Like, at what point have you not realized I'm using Elementor Pro? Like, do I have to literally put the word Elementor Pro, Pro, like in massive writing on the cover art? I put it in the title. It's in the video description. What point do I have to put the word Elemental Pro everywhere? Like, I'm not using Elemental Free. Plain and flipping simple. Um, okay, I'm. you're now down to the last 30 seconds. And hi, by the way, Dave, um, I don't know if I said hi to you earlier or not, if you've just popped in, but I hope you're okay. Please don't forget, if you have not already, and I know loads of you have, by the way, I can see your names, loads of you have, Please don't forget to sign up, okay, for the webinar next week. Okay, everyone, I'm going to say take care. It's time to wind up so I can crack on with other stuff. I'm going to wish you all the best. I hope you have an amazing day, evening or morning. Stay safe. Go and do something exciting today if you can. Five or ten minutes, just something, okay? Feel good about yourself. And we'll be back tomorrow at the later time. Hope to catch you all there. Stay safe and see you soon. Bye.